you know, on drives like this back to Ontario or back to Ohio, which I'm doing both of today, um, it gives me an opportunity to reflect. Not just the week or the summer, but the year. And it's important to reflect because it allows me to stay balanced as we head into sales season, right? I can't believe I'm saying that. Wow. Um, you know, I like to look at our barn, where the horses are inside of it, which ones are staying, which ones might be going, who I have optimism for as they start to come out of the field. You guys know this year is going to be the first year we pivot a little bit. What I mean by that is, you know, I've, you've heard me talk about it. I was so pleased with the way that time is on my side, come back, and the way we were able to manage him all year. Raced him in those, for lack of a better word, cheaper races uh, throughout the end of the year into the new, I think he qualified January or December, raced him through till February, realized, geez, we got a pretty nice horse here, put him away, rested him for a little bit, brought him back, raced him in those stake races. Then there was a gap and we were able to actually rest him again and bring him back again. And I don't think he's ever been as good or as fresh as he is right now. You would think after that tough trip, first ever start on a half mile track. I think the fastest we'd ever trained him on a half may have been 2.8, 2.10. Because remember, he was training down in Northfield, but then we sent him over to Tim to qualify him. Maybe he trained at 2.5, I don't know. It wasn't fast. So to have his first mile, uh, her first fast mile on a half mile track, end up with him at the quarter in 25 and four, and finishing second pacing in 150 and a piece, was a hell of a mile. And you would think that that might take a little, little starch out of his undies, as he raced seven days later in the hemp, and Mark drove him very well. Again, you know, this month it seems more than more than most. Uh, post positions have really played a, have really had a negative impact in our burn. And I don't want to cry. Everybody gets bad posts. It just seems like on a case by case basis. Time is on my side. Mark said if he had left three instead of gem quality, he's a close third. He feels, and it looks like he's probably right. Then we had last week was just horrible. Everybody drew the outside. That's racing. But as I look through our horses and what we were able to accomplish this year, you know, you look at all the horses and go, ah, oh, this one should have been better. Ah, oh, that one should have been better. Ah, oh, this one should have been better. And then you take a quick glance at On Gate, our preferred, and see all the two year olds on there. Or take a look in, you know, I, I was frustrated because Grand Slam Dio, here's a Philly we give 100000 for, and we're racing her in the Wildcat, which is below the, this is the fourth tier. And the horse that just beat me at the wire was a $435,000 filly. It was a sister to Carl the other day. And then you go down the program and you look at the prices of all the horses in those races. And you realize quickly that it's not just what they're doing right now, but what they're trying to be set up for in the future and next year. And for those of you who maybe have a tough time struggling with, you know, that maturity, that growth, and well, if a horse is an okay horse at two, maybe they're not that good at three, maybe they just don't hit a shot, time is on my side was extraordinary, not extraordinary, extraordinary at two, James didn't like him that much, what a different horse, I remember he said to me after I was second in the, uh, in the adios, he goes, oh my god, I can't believe that horse was that good. They see a horse like Militant. Militant was not extraordinary. He was mediocre at best. He was stuck in the way and not competitive in Kentucky when he was there at Oak Grove. He came back here. He get up in the inside to win the, the condition claimer at the Meadows. He's out of that class. Might have been the non of two or three, maybe. I don't know. Out of that class, we stuffed him in the condition claimer at Northfield came to life. Won a couple of races. Good enough, we took him to Kentucky. Luckily, he was not competitive again, but again, look at who he was racing against. Those are legit, decent three-year-olds. Brought him back to Ohio. We thought it was the right move. It was. Jogs, his first start. 
wins by six and 56. We take him to Sayota last night. Now he's a little exposed. This is a different crew of condition claimers. This is a 40 claimer. No, 50 claimer, non winners of 10. He's the only three year old in the race. Not only is he the only three year old in the race, but he drew in with some kind of freak that I haven't seen in a while. That horse won wrapped up in 52 and one. Militant trots out of his skin and his bones and his shoes. Trots 53 flat to be second. A totally different horse. I love seeing the horses progress. And it got me to thinking, I have a soft list of horses. I have expectations. A horse like Oh Hill No, we had to put away a little bit. I think she could be any kind of three-year-old. Big, beautiful filly, gorgeous gait, great attitude, smart, understands racing beyond her experience. Knees are a little weak, a little sore. We're going to stop with her. What kind of horse could she be at coming back at three? And then it got me to thinking about all the other horses we had, right? All the other ones that are good right now or were good this summer. Three-year-olds that have raced well for us this summer, aged race horses. The list came out just under 50, which is a little over half our burn right now. The other half our burn are made up of horses that are maybe not that good. Maybe turned out injured on their way back or in limbo Pelican Al I don't know what kind of horse Pelican Al is going to be I know Jason was going to train him at 2.30 today he cross fires struggles a little bit the speed appears to be there we just don't know what kind of engine he is what's in his head that remains to be seen we're going to talk about the horses that are good. Very good horses. Arrowhead Hanover. Understaked. A little lightly staked. But he has a legitimate shot. And this is so cool. Because this is the third time this has happened in Pennsylvania. In the last decade. White Tiger. There's a horse that was so good at two. And came up about that short. To winning the uh, to winning the Pennsylvania final, and that was only a few short years or a couple of short years after the same thing happened to me with Lawmaker. Beat what seemed to be inches, and now you're looking at another horse, Arrowhead Hanover. Don't kid yourself; he is absolutely good enough to win the Pennsylvania Sires final. He is a standard bred, and the Keystone Classic after that, three races, and then we're going to turn him out. Get the back. Aunt Lily won the next generation. Keep in mind, I think everybody, and I have to do it sometimes too, is take a step back and look at where we're at. Where we are at in Pennsylvania, you're racing against Burke, Melander, Norman, is it Nifty, Brett Pelly, Noel Daly. She's the best trainers in the world, though. Nancy Tactor, she's there. Tony Alanya. She's the best trainers in the world. Think you're going to hide in Ohio? Burke is there. Brian Brown is there. Virgil Morgan is there. Some of the best trainers in the world. Ontario? You're not hiding from people. That's the one thing, you know. I always am an optimistic person. I get high on our horses training down. But I always say, you know, everything, every time I do a video, that caveat is, but I don't know how good everybody else's horses are. I watched Rose. I was angry the day that Gorgeous Package got beaten her qualifier. That horse of Burke's run her down like, Argh! I thought she was just a, a monster. And Burke's horse run us down. That was the same horse that set the track record the other day. 50 and two, a two-year-old filly, Rose. That was the horse that ran down Gorgeous Package in the qualifier. Now, that means nothing. 
two different jurisdictions, two different worlds, two different universes. Again, you don't know who else has good horses. Watch my guys, uh, my buddies, have uh, Poppy Grad. Just got beat the other day. Uh, didn't just get beat, but came from last to be second in rows, and it, it, it was undefeated up until that point. Steve Carter, again, got a race against him in Ohio. You can't hide in Kentucky. You can't hide anywhere. What I have to remind myself sometimes is this is horse racing. We are in the major leagues. We're not playing in the minors. There's no gimmies. You know, there's no mulligans. This is hard-nosed racing. And it is tough to win the Breeders' Crown. It is tough to win the Little Brown Jug, the North American Cup, the Metal Lights Base, the Hamiltonian. We've done none of them. And it might be a while before we win any of them. But the ride along the way is what makes it exciting. That's what makes this game exciting. It's only inevitable before we win some of these races. But being anchored and understanding what you're up against keeps everything together so Arrowhead Hanover Aunt Lily already beat them once Tyler Smith told me she was awesome the other night and I agree she was he drove her great she looked great where we go from here this is the time of year when there's a lot of strategic discussions take place racing the Buckeye look to you in the consolation of the Buckeye final a little trickier on the three-year-old Colt side, trotting Colt side. So those discussions are ongoing. But Aunt Lily, legitimate nice filly, gonna go over 100 grand for sure if she hasn't already. Just nice filly. Blue Ventura, here's a horse that didn't make a ton of money, but it reminds me a ton of, of Time is on my side. He understands the game. He's put forth a number of 54 miles, I think a, a 153 mile. Many 27 last quarters. Out to the field now. We'll bring him back and race him in the winter. The exact same way we did. Time's on my side. Captain Incredible. Sky's the limit for this guy. Everybody that's ever sat behind him loves him. His first start, 53, 26 and a piece on the end of it. Made some shoeing adjustments. Let his hobbles out. He's in to go tomorrow. I am super excited to see how he races. Chicago Hall. That's where I'm on my way to go right now. Drive Chicago Hall. Win, lose, or draw tonight. He's a nice cold. Very nice colt. There's no slouches. You're gonna have to earn it. Same way everybody else does. Country dancing. Here's the Philly Weeks. He had so much hope for. And it was starting to wane a little bit, right? Is she really that good or is she just okay? Even after I won in 53 flat with her at the Meadows as a two-year-old and a maiden. Still didn't know if she was that good. Chris Lem said she was great yesterday. Lots of pace at the wire. 53-2, and two, beating one a quarter of a length, a half a length. She looked awesome. Makes it into the Stallion Series final. And she will race in Kentucky. And I can't wait to see her race in Kentucky. And if she continues to progress better and better and better, you might see her in a bigger race later in the fall. Freedom Hill. Little throw-in Philly. One of those little bucket fillers. 18 or 20,000, 22, something like that. Trained down good, showed talent. Really nice filly. Can't blame her for last week. Anytime times you get a warm horse up and it starts to pour rain as you start to warm her up. And then, oh, by the way, the lights just go out. All of them. Pitch black on the track when you're training. Just tied up a little bit. She'll be back. Gaslight Hall. Put him in an impossible position last week. Second in the first grassroots. You know what we're going to do? Let's take him to Kentucky and race him in the toughest division. Because there's only 12 in the division. And if there's only 12 in the division, and he gets a bone, he gets a fourth or a fifth somehow, it could be enough to get him in the final. It might be. He grabbed a fifth. Pouring rain in the mud flip-flops on on a track that isn't kind to horses that wear flip-flops. Out the whole way. Fifth, 57. 
our gamble may have paid off. Maybe. But you still got to go and win. It's one thing to say, he might make it in. He's got to go and get some money. He's got a shot. Gorgeous package. Another throw-in purchase. Bought her on, uh, on OnGate. On uh, the OnGate kind of odds on racing dispersal sale. Scooped up her and Blue Ventura. Both these horses have turned out to be incredibly nice fillies. Uh, gorgeous package. is already guaranteed a spot in the Buckeye final, I believe, by math and money. We're going to race her in the Sire Stakes this week coming up. See if we can't sneak her into the Constellation final again. Both of them. The horse that surprised me the most last week, Grand Slam deal, how much she's improved. Crosses over from post 10 at the Red Mile. Just like that. Crossed over to the front, put the brakes on, let one go, but then got shuffled. Weave through late. Got beat a nose. 57 by Carl Sister. Jim Bree made my list, but hasn't really shown us a ton since that second in Oak Grove. She's trained up tighter. Eric's doing the best job he can with her. I think she's going to be a nice filly. She's got to come forward, but again, draws eight. Can't really leave with her because she has shown blood a little bit. We're trying to manage it best we can. But it was there. So we can't really blast a horse like her out of there. you got to be very conservative. Memento Mori knocking on the door. It's only a matter of time. Second beat, what, a half length, a quarter of a length, the head, whatever. 54 flat the other day. Just such a nice horse. Princess Dream. Regardless of what happens with Princess Dream, her sister just set a world record, won the Hambo Oaks. She's worth a fortune, regardless. And not, not to mention, she's a very, very nice filly. Second and third in her first two starts. Getting better, getting stronger every week. Give her a week off, heading into a prep race for the grassroots after that. We have a lot of fun with this filly. Resolve indeed, a little flat the other day, but scope three out of five for Mucus. She's better than that. She's a nice filly. She's already proven that also. A winner, shown a couple of quarters in 28 seconds. She's coming on also as the grassroots approaches. Rose on AJ, here's a horse that did what we wanted him to. Hey uh, guys, we have a horse that's gonna pace 53 at two. 27 on the end. He's going to take a mark. Open, up, open length winner at 56. Last half, 57. He's going to pace 54, 55 every week. You okay with that? Yeah. Cool. Because that makes him about the 18th best horse in Ohio. We don't know how good the other people's horses are. AJ's a nice horse. He's going to continue to be a nice horse. He's going to make the Buckeye final. I hope. He's going to do some damage in there. We're going to have a nice three-year-old. But one thing I can tell you about AJ, he has grown up. He has matured. He does understand his work. And he's a better horse for it. Rosan Alexander, flat last night. We'll get her blood back. I'm pretty sure there'll be stuff we can work on. You know, 54 in a piece, last half 56 and four, last quarter 29 seconds. It's not like she was terrible. But she was not as good as she could be or has been. Rosetta, bit of a lunatic. Much like much like Jim Bree, has a lot to prove. A lot of mental maturity needed there. But she's coming on. I shouldn't say that. She regressed the other day and went into full lunatic mode. Her first start, she was great. So hopefully, I'll, I'll settle for anything in the middle or towards the first race. Not so much the second one. She's probably gonna have a few more starts and then we'll turn her out. She just gotta grow up, mature. And Westland Warrior, a little flat the other day, but had like 14 recalls. I don't like the breaking rule in Kentucky. It's not conducive to, to the rest of the horses and the races, and I just don't understand how they implement it. If you're on the run going up to the gate, they'll call a recall. If you do it again, they scratch you. Refund you. Why don't you just refund you after the race? Why do we need to penalize everybody else that's not on the run? It happened to me with Rosetta. I caused a recall. There's no need of it. I was going to catch the gate if they just kept going. And then last week with a horse in with Westland Warrior. There's just no need of it. Just refund the horse after the race if you want. I, d I don't understand the argument they have for that breaking rule. I just think it's... Maybe I'm missing something, but it just seems like it's not implemented as well as it could be. And then, you know, I don't know how many two-year-olds that is, 18 or 20. 
then our three-year-old's arson. A point of contention this week. A little bit of, uh, you know, stuffed and filled up the complaints box with arson and some of our Ohio clients and wanting to race in the little brown jug because it was sentimental. And it's not like it's a hard no, but it's a no right now. It's a soft no. Here's a horse that finished third, 50 and two, last quarter in 25 and three in Lexington. He is an actual contender in the $400,000 final as of right now. Now we can race for twice that in Delaware, but we have to race against legendary Hanover and Toddy's horse, Todd McCarthy's horse, Noel Daly's horse, and a host of others. Or we can stay in Kentucky. I mean, for me, driving down the road right now, the, the answer is easy. He stays in Kentucky. But it will be open for discussion as we move through into um, September when the jug is coming. Listen, it's a great discussion, dialogue, argument, whatever you want to call it. It's a great dialogue to have. It's a great problem to have. We have a horse that's almost good enough for the Little Brown Jug and more than good enough to race in the Kentucky Final. Good for us. Drebin, starting to finally come around. I didn't realize what kind of a mile it was until Mike Wilder pointed it out after the mile. He likes the horse. He drove him the week before, said he liked him. I drove him the other day. 54-1, and one, but I'm at the quarter at 29-2. and two. His last three quarters, 124-4. That's what it was the other day. Driving away winner. He looked amazing. Gypsy Hill. I believe first or second in points in the grassroots. Taking a mark of 55, 56. It wasn't his best race the other night, but not a bad race. And it's been good all year. Here's his son. He's just an absolute monster right now. Second in 52 and 4 the other day. He's racing against aged horses. These are all aged horses they're racing against last night. Huge mile for him. Memory and imagination made an odd break the other day. He'll atone for it tomorrow. Militant. Man, what, what a nice horse he's turned into. I can't believe I'm saying that. He was such a mongrel at two. Rude and ignorant. He'd touch a knee and he'd get out of gear. And he really wasn't that fast. Come back this year. Didn't hit a knee. Was rude. A little bit ignorant. Really wasn't that fast. And then just through understanding, his attitude came around. And it wasn't until we got him in those condition claimers that he progressed. His confidence grew and built and better and better and better and better and actually turned into a rather nice horse to drive. He worked his ass off last night. Trots at 53 flat on a 5 8 mile track. Bounce for all. He's going to be the sleeper. I predict it. This is going to be a, a tremendously talented four-year-old trotter. That's my prediction. We'll see how that see if I'm right or wrong. Pickpocket. Come back good. I would say certainly in no way, shape, or form am I disappointed at all in Pickpocket. He was an incredible two-year-old. He's a pretty good three-year-old. He come back all, truth be told, probably the exact same as we put him away. I would say his win in Kentucky last year was a mirror image of the Bluegrass or the International Stallion. It just happened to be in that. Goldenrod. It's 3 to 2 tomorrow. Should be good. Let's let him progress and see what kind of horse he is. Prince Charmer, I, I almost didn't put him on the list. I just like him. A likable horse. He's going to do some damage now throughout the fall into the winter. And I think he could be. I don't think he's the same as Mounds for All. I think he's going to be a very good horse. But I think Prince Charmer could be a, a really effective four year old for us. We'll see how that plays out. Ready for landing. Uh, he'll race next week. Or, or, no, sorry. He's out in the field right now. He'll come back. I plan on qualifying him without the hobbles on. And then we'll see how he behaves and how he races. I could see him racing either again at Mohawk or at the Meadowlands this winter. I think he's got some talent. Just has to show it. Our newest horse that we just bought, Tenacious Hanover. I only bring him up because he's actually ahead of time is on my side in the standings for points and P.A. Sires. Now, I hope we leapfrog him when time is on my side. Race time is on my side in the finals. Race the other horse in the consolation. 
and then continue on our way with Tenacious Hanover. Here's a horse that shows, as I said, one win, and he's got more points than time is on my side. His last starter, second last start, he paced 50 and two. One win. We don't have to race him in the Buckeye. We can race him, or the Stallion. We can race him in the Stallion, or we can race him in the non Wars too, wherever we want. For what we paid for him, I think he's a pretty good purchase. And time is on my side. It's been, uh, well, our best three-year-old this year. An incredible horse for us. Third in the Adio, second in the Milstein, fifth in the Hemp. He's heading to the Little Brown Jug, likely heading to the Breeders' Crown. And he's not really a household name right now, but as I said to Mark, and Mark had said to me, he confirmed it after the hemp. He maybe doesn't scare the best Colts just yet, but the difference is, is that every time he goes on the track, he gets a little bit better. And most of them have already shown their best. And that is the biggest attribute to time is on my side right now. Then we look at the age sources. Brace for Landing, as soon as we clean out that division where Militant was racing, or is racing, and where um, Gypsy Hill is, Brace for Landing fits in there also. He's only got six wins. We're going to take advantage of those last four wins, I can tell you that right now. Collector is selling on Monday. He was a winner in 53-4. and four. Quietly done very, very, very well with Collector since Harrisburg last year. Save America. I think we're going to have a ton of fun with this guy. It was so sad. I was mad that I missed to drive him. First, I was mad he drew the heat hole. And then I sat in the airport like a putz all day. I don't really know what that word means. I don't even think it's a word. I've heard it. Eh. Just sat there all day. Watched delay after delay until I couldn't make it anymore. It was pretty heartbreaking. But... It's life. Adam Murner got, a, got, as Vance Cameron said, the drive, the catch drive of a lifetime. I wish he'd have won that kid. As much as it would have hurt me to know that I, I didn't win the Gold Cup because Air Canada delayed my flight an additional 15 minutes. That's all I missed by. They touched down in Prince Edward Island at 11. I watched the flight on my phone. 11.23. They went behind the gate at 11.25. The last delay was for 15 minutes. That's the difference between making my drive and not. And it would have hurt to watch him win the race with another driver, but ultimately I would have been super excited for all my partners and for Adam Erner. As it turned out, he drove the horse good and finished third. And he's gonna be a very good horse for us. Tactical Mounds has been the best horse we've ever had at the stable. And it's going to be quite a long time before we can say, I think this one's better than Tactical Mounts. I, I, we have a trotter that went sub 149 and 4. How many people can say they've had a horse win sub 150 on the trot? Megan has done a tremendous job. Scott has done a tremendous job. And I want to, I think I need to take a moment, as I always generally like to do, and thank everybody, the caretakers, you, our clients, for allowing us to buy these horses. But the hard work that everybody puts into them. You know, James knew that Chicago Hall's break bothered me. Really disappointed me. I was really angry over it. Not angry at anybody or the horse, just angry at the situation. He went in the next day to jog the horse himself. It doesn't work for us anymore. Went in to jog the horse himself because he didn't know that I was still in Ontario just to see if he was all right. That's, now he's my brother, so there's a connection there. He is the best driver in Canada. One of the best drivers in the world right now. And for him to take time to go and do that when he didn't have to, obviously speaks to brotherly love, but at the same time, you know, he wants to see us do good. I continue to talk with Scotty. Not my brother. Drove all the way to the open house in a car. Went with horses in the pouring rain. Still shocked over that. Wants to see us do good. Megan, the hard work she puts in. Harry, Dominic, Jason, both Jasons, all our caretakers. 
your hard work is on display every single day at the stable. Texan Soprano, another Megan horse, on his way back. Greatest ending. You forgot about him, didn't you? He finally put together four good races. And then we decided to give him a little time off, heal his feet up, get that AST down, work on his leg. I expect him to be a good horse in the winter for us in southern Ohio with Stacy. JK Victory, yes, he's had five bad starts in a row. And I think we can agree they weren't all hit of his doing. In a little bit of a funk, here's a horse that was on fire last year for us. Continues to be a 150, 149, 151 type pacer. We'll figure out what we're doing with him. Good horse looks like money. He's getting very close to being ready again. He is on time. Rock Shining Star, a winner already in an open frost at the Meadows. Drew a poor position. We talked about last week's poor positions. This is one of the horses that fell to that. Jason Hughes did as good a job as he could driving him. He just needed a little bit of help. He didn't get it. Drew seven instead of two. You're sixth instead of first, second, or third. Three point blue chip. The horse that meant so much to us, continues to mean a lot to us, but really helped put us on the map, winning the matron. Helped put James on the map too, winning the matron. He's racing good. Yo, Mister has not been as good this year. Was battling some issues. The sound this week, Harry said. He's going to train him up hard this week and have him in to go again. If you move him along the way, so be it. But I want everybody to understand, you know, I get emails all the time. Such race so good in Ohio. Why don't we have him in Ohio? You're just assuming he's the same horse as he was last year. It's the same as the argument I had with one of our clients this week about Patrick the Piranha. They don't stay the same forever. They don't stay good forever. And the ones that are great and on the top of their game at 105%, 10% slide is a huge difference on the track. And yes, I'll be the first to admit that neither of the two horses I just mentioned, neither of them are as good as they were last year. But both of them are still very good horses. Yo, Mr. will race next week, so will Patrick the Prom. And in between those two horses, stay close. I think probably what you're going to see, now he drew 898 or 899 his last three. It's not his fault. You need to be up near the action. You can't do that from way out there with him. Now, I did out of the nine hole, but I know him. And I think when those other drivers look right and see me coming out of there with stay close, you know, with the flying the pirate flag <laughs> coming off the car, you're going to get a spot. You're going to make front. But if you're a catch driver looking left, trying to find a spot with stay close, there's no room at the end, no vacancy. And I certainly don't blame Chris Lambs for ducking the horse yesterday. He did the right thing by the horse. But he's going to be down in class now. And when he gets back up to where they think they're going to stuff him into the open on us. Or call it the nominers of twelve to 15,000 and use horses that have been in the open. I suspect what you're probably going to see is stay close, win two or three races, and then be up for sale. There's nothing I hate more than being stuck in a tough position. And that's exactly what we've been stuck in with. Stay close. He's not an open trotter. And the backup class does not fill enough to accommodate us. And that's what you see on Monday, right? A lot of those horses. Victory Blue Chip, Collector, all those horses might fit great somewhere like Dover, right? Or Philadelphia or Saratoga or Plain Ridge or somewhere else. They just don't fit at the Meadows, Northfield, or Scioto. I don't have the supreme confidence to send them to somebody else to race them in those classes. I'm not certain they can do in there or they wouldn't be in the sale. They have value. They have worth. And we're doing our best to replace them right now and I think we've done a pretty good job. And we'll continue to do a pretty good job. Now it is sale season. We're going to be talking about the buckets over the next week or so how they're going to work for Ohio, how they're going to work for um, Lexington in particular. We'll always, and we always will, keep our eye on Ontario. Also, look for some horses for Ontario. It's a tough division too, right? We have nice horses in Ontario. 
Resolve and D, Princess Dream, Gaslight Hall, Chicago Hall, all good horses. All quality animals. Ontario is like everywhere else, tough. But the one thing I find about Ontario, I believe anyway, maybe just because I haven't, I find it tough to find the same value purchases that we do for Ohio, Pennsylvania, and obviously New York. So do you need to retool the way we approach the sales in Ontario? I don't know. But the discussion is on the table. The dialogue is there. We're still talking to people. We're still going to focus on exactly what we did. Finding value-based purchases for every jurisdiction all over North America. And that is exactly what we are going to continue to do this year. So we'll start unveiling the buckets for Ohio and Lexington. I, I think it may benefit us more to focus on Ohio and then the second Ohio is over, switch gears to Lexington. I know it's only uh, a week or so. I don't know. Anyway, everything's on the table as far as the buckets go, as far as what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. Feel free to drop me a line. Let me know what you think. And always, please, I know I always get emails and the first thing it says, I'm really sorry to bother you. I know you're busy. I am never too busy for the people that make up the statement. Right? That's my job. So you don't you needn't start your emails or text messages with that. Everybody is busy. I want to make sure we get it right and we continue to get it right and we continue to evolve and grow and mature. Make the stable the best stable it can be. And I can only do that with everybody's help. So that is a 37 minute opening. Very little rambling. Not a lot of fat on the on the steak there. A lot of information, a lot to discuss, a lot to talk about. And now you have all of your videos, starting with your opening, ready for you this week. Take care, everybody.